Hello, welcome to this DCS AH64D tutorial. In this video we will cover basic flight mechanics. This is not meant to be an all-encompassing tutorial on how to fly the Apache. Just give you some building blocks to play around with to hopefully, hopefully get you in the air. Before we begin, we need to verify two controls. The first is our force trim button. We will utilize this to set our aircraft trim. And the second is the Symbology Select Switch Up, which is what we will utilize to be in transition mode. If you press the Symbology Select Switch down, you will see it will look like this in your helmet. If you press down again, it will look like that. We want to press up so we see the dashed line, and it looks like this. You can fly utilizing whatever modes you prefer, but I find 99% of the time I'm just in transition mode. So to take off, I'm going to give myself a little bit of left rudder and a little bit of left stick. As I give myself progressively more collective, I will give myself more left rudder to compensate. At about 60% or so, I will start to take off. I'm just going to slowly ease into it. The percentage is in the upper left of your helmet. All right, I am up. Our altitude is indicated on the right hand side of our helmet, and I'm going to hover right here. At this point, I'm going to utilize my force trim to trim my aircraft and let my controls come back to center. This will give me a little bit more resolution. I'm going to go ahead and move over to the side. And then I will explain some of the symbology in our HUD. Giving her right rudder to turn and a little bit of stick. Alright, as I'm creeping along here, in transition mode you will see two things. This line and this circle. This circle is what our controls are telling the aircraft to do. And the line is what the aircraft is doing. So you'll see the line lags behind the circle, depending on the inputs I give it. If you want to be in a hover, you'll bring the circle to the center of your helmet display and keep it there to the best of your abilities. And we're back in a hover. We want to gain forward speed. I will give her some collective and nose forward. If I want to slow down, I will reduce my collective and raise my nose very slightly. One thing to note is your speed and your descent rate. On the left of your helmet is your speed in knots, and on the right is a display that represents your altitude and your descent rate. When you descend, you do not want this arrow to fall much further than below this second tick. If that happens, you have the ability to just fall straight out of the air if you are at a low airspeed, probably something slower than about 10 or so knots. So I'm going to come around and gently set her down as an example. modulating my collective to not drop below that second notch. And I'm down. Alright, 
now I will go back up and cover two different ways to trim your aircraft. get some speed. Going to go ahead and trim out. Let my controls come back to center. Gives me a little bit more play with the controls to maintain control. Alright, the first method of trimming out your aircraft is an aerodynamic trim. I am currently in an aerodynamic trim because this ball is in the center of these two lines on my helmet. My velocity vector is offset, and so is this line coming off to the circle on my helmet. This is useful for flying around because the aircraft is asymmetric. You will fly when in an aerodynamic trim, crabbed, and kind of be flying sideways to your target. The second trim method is a nose to tail trim. Here I am in a nose to tail trim. I can tell I'm in a nose to tail trim because my velocity vector is centered and my line is straight up. I'm at a fairly low speed, but if you're doing this fast, you will see that this circle is now offset and not centered. Nose to tail trim is useful for nap of the earth flying because your nose and your tail are perfectly in line and your tail will not be sticking out to get clipped on any trees or obstacles or power lines or buildings in your way. So if you're flying close to the earth, you're going to want to stay in nose to tail, and if you're, trend, if you're flying from A to B a little bit higher, you probably want to be in aerodynamic trim. You can see here, in nose tail, the ball is off center. And you can fly utilizing your velocity vector similar to as in a fixed wing aircraft. That will tell you where you are going. All right, let's head back to the airfield. This entire time, I am utilizing both my stick, my collective, and my rudder pedals to maintain the appropriate trim and direction I want for the aircraft. If I was approaching a target, in this case the airfield, and I wanted to slow down and establish a hover, I would drop my collective watching that descent meter on the right hand side and pull my nose back. going to get off to the side to avoid those trees because I want to get a little bit lower. If you wanted to maintain your altitude, you would just keep that descent arrow right about there in that center tick and you'll maintain your altitude. This is the arrow I'm talking about. It's not quite as easy to point things out in this aircraft while I'm flying as a fixed wing because all of my hands and feet are occupied as I'm flying. Alright, I'm going to trim out, reset my controls. And utilizing that circle, I can establish a hover. So right now it's telling me I'm going backwards, which is good because I want to get away from these trees.
And if I had targets of that field, I would be able to sit here, pop up, shoot, and then pop back down. As you give collective, you're going to be needing to use your rudder pedals to counter the torque. Now let's go land. In the next video, I will cover utilizing George, your Hellfire missiles, and your cannon. When you're descending, just make sure you control your speed so you don't end up stalling out your aircraft and slamming into the ground. Before you proceed to the next video talking about George, his controls, and utilizing the Hellfires, please make sure that you are able to hover efficiently because most of the tutorial will be done from a hover. When you come into land, it is helpful to go nose tail to make sure you don't roll your aircraft. You'll notice that I have to give it quite a bit of rudder input while I'm on the ground even though my collective is all the way down, and that is because it is trimmed out for flight. If I release my rudders, I'm going to start spinning. So when you're down, go ahead and just trim out, and then you can release your rudder pedals. Thanks for watching.